Now in this video I am going to talk to you about loops. That's the most basic uh, type of loop in C++. So let's see how we can uh, declare for loop and how we can use for loop. So for the declaration of for loop, uh, the declaration syntax looks like this. So what you uh, do is you write for and just give these two parentheses and this for takes three parameters. First is the initialization and then it is separated by semicolon. Second is the condition and third is the increment. Okay and in this curly braces you provide the code you want to execute according to the condition which is met in the loop. So let's take an example. I'm going to declare a loop. So I will write here for and I will give these two brackets and I will give these two curly braces which is the basic syntax of for. Now I'm going to declare the initialization first. So for example I will take integer int i is equal to 1 then I will separate it by semicolon then I will give the condition so for example I want to give the condition loop till my condition reaches 10 for example so i is less than or equal to 10 okay and then the third condition is the increment so I will give semicolon once again and I will get, should say i plus plus so this means that we are incrementing i by 1 this is just like saying that i is equal to i plus 1 okay so this is this and this is same so we are incrementing i by 1 every time it sees the condition oh it's less than 10 still it increase the i by 1 now we will output our variable i so i will say see out i and once again endl okay now I will build the program and let's see what happens. I will run the program and you see what happens here is it's looping. So it goes to the for loop and it initializes i is equal to 1 and it goes into the execution of for loop and it prints 1 and once again it goes back to for loop and increment it by 1, right? So what's happening? i is equal to 1, it prints it, it increments it by 1, goes to the loop once again. Now this time i is equal to 2 and it sees condition which is less than 10, 2 is less than 10. Then it prints 2 once again and increment i by 1 which is i is equal to 3, goes to the conditions condition once again and it sees yes um, i is equal to 3 is less than 10. So it prints 3 once again and this loop happens until 10 is printed and then it goes to the loop once again and sees okay now i is equal to 11 which is not fulfilling this condition i is less than or equal to 10 so I am not going to print this and I am going to break the for loop and I am going to go out of the loop and return 0. So this is printing this these values of i one by one until this condition is met okay now there is one more thing you can do with the, the for loop is to decrement the value it's not necessary that you need to increment the value every time and it's also not necessary to increase increase the value by one you can increase the value by two or you can initialize the value by something else so let's see 
let's initialize i by some other value for example 6 and I will say the condition would be i is less than or equal to 60 for example and I will increase this i by 5 so I will write i plus equal to 5 that means increment the value of uh, i by 5 and assign it to i okay so once again when I build my program and run it you can see it's showing me 6 for the first time and increase this 6 by 5 so 6 plus 5 is 11 and then it sees the condition okay 11 is less than 60 so I'm going to increase it 5 once again then 16 is less than 60 so I am going to increase it by 5 and again so in this way you can initialize your i by any value and you can increment this i by any value and you can give any condition uh, which can be equal to equal to or which can be less than or greater than or whatever value the second thing is you can decrement the value of i also so let me show you this example also so for example i initialize uh, i is equal to 10 and i want that i should print until i is greater than or equal to 1 equal to 1 okay and I will decrement i by 1 every time so I will say minus minus and this minus is just like i is equal to i minus 1 okay so this like i is, is just like you minus the value of i by 1 right so now what will happen let's see let's build the program and run it and you can see this time i starts from 10 because we initialize the value of i as 10 so it prints 10 and it goes to the loop once again and it sees okay i is equal to 9 this time because we minus 10 by 1 which is 9 so i is equal to 9 which is still greater than or equal to 1 so I will print it once again 9 and once again this loop will happen and happen until 1 is reached and the condition will be false then right so in this way you can use for loop in C++ so I'm going to explain you something about increment operator and assignment operator so let's get started first of all I will explain you how assignment operation works so let's take an example. I will declare an integer x is equal to 25 and I'm going to print it. Very simple stuff. X. Okay. Now for example, I want to add to uh, this value, add some more m value to this value. I have shown you that you can do it like this x is equal to x plus 5 for example and what it will do is it will take the value of x and add 5 to it and place it into x once again right so let's build it and run it and it will show us 30 but the more efficient way to do this is because you are using x two times you can just reduce this by writing it something like this okay so x plus is equal to 5 it will just serve the same purpose as before it will add 5 to our variable which is x and then save it into the same variable once again i will run the program and answer is same and you can do this assignment operation with multiplication, subtraction, division or you can take a modulus. So I will show you one by one. First of all minus. So what it will do is 
we'll take x and subtract 5 from it and we'll show the result we'll save the result in this x and we'll show the result here right so run the program and it shows 20 same is with product or multiplication you just give asterisk it will multiply 25 by 5 just run the program and you see 125 and you can do it with the division also but remember it doesn't show the remainder only the multiplication value or multiple value right so in this case it will show 5 because we don't have any remainder but if you divide 25 by 4 it will still let's see what it gives us 6 and it doesn't show us the remainder in order to show the remainder you need to give this model sign and then it will just show you the remainder which is 1 right so it shows the remainder 1 now this is about assignment operation now I have also told you about increment operation in the for loop tutorial so for example you want to increment 1 or add 1 to the variable x then you can do it like this x plus plus and what it will do it will add 1 to our variable x and print it here right now let me show you a phenomena of, or how you can use this in two different ways so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this and paste it here once again and what I'm going to do is I will increment x by 1 here just delete this and then I will show the value of x right and both I'm printing let's see what happens and you see what's happening here is it's even though we are increasing the value of x by 1 but it's showing 25 first and then 26 so this phenomena is uh, happening because we are adding this plus plus after our x okay so what will happen is it will your c++ code will print the value of x first and then add 1 to it and then when you print x to the second time it will show the addi addition value so 26 it will show here but for example you want to add 1 or uh, add this 1 before showing the value what, what you need to do is you just need to add this plus plus before this x now it will what it will do is it will add 1 to x first and then print this value and this will be the same so let's see what happens now just close our program and build it run it and you can see now this is 26 26 so it takes the value of x increment it and then prints it so this is the difference between this prefix of plus plus and trailing plus plus right so just remember if you want to increment the value first add these plus plus in the front and if you want to increment the value after showing uh, the value then you just add it after plus plus same rule will be true for minus so when you do this x x, my x minus minus here and when you run the program it will still show you the value 25 because the subtraction is not happened here but it it's happened after the execution of this so in the next line then you can see 24 in the next line and when you add this minus minus in front then your value is subtracted first so 1 is subtracted from the x and then it prints 24 and then 24 so this is all about 
or the basics about assignment operator and increment operator. So I'm going to show you how to use while loop in C++. So while loop is other kind of loop other than uh, for loop which I have already uh, shown you in the last videos. So let's see how we can use while loop. So the syntax for while loop is while and you give this curly or parenthesis and then you give these curly braces. Okay. So this is the syntax of while loop. And what this while loop does is it loops around uh, the condition until and unless the condition is met. So let me show you an example. I will take a uh, integer called x is equal to 1 for example and I will say while x is less than or equal to 5 then print some value. So I will say C out and x and line. And now when I run this program, let's see what happens. So when I run this program, you can see there are so many values printing one after another. So this is because our while loop is executing. So because we have given this condition that x should be less than and equal to. So while this condition is true, x will be printed. Otherwise, x will not be printed. So let's give some logic, logic to this while loop. So I will say x plus plus. So that increment the value of x by 1. So once again when you compile and run the program, it will print 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? Because what it's doing is it's going, because we initialize x by 1, it will go to the loop and it sees x is less than 1 and then it increases or increments this, the value of x by 1 which is 1 plus 1 is 2 so it's it prints 2 here using this statement and once again loops around this loop and sees 2 is still less than or equal to 5 and then it, it increments the value by 1 and it prints it and once again it loops around and it checks the condition and once and again when it sees that x, the value of x at the time of uh, 6 is less than or equal to this is not, uh, this condition is not fulfilled, then it goes out of the loop and returns 0. So this is how you can use while loop. Let me show you a, a better example than this. So let's say you have a number, some number. So I will declare my number as number is equal to 0 because I initialize this number by 0 in order to eliminate any garbage values. And I will also declare a third variable called sum. Okay. And that also I initialize by 0. Now I want to input, I want that in user should input the value so I will say C out input any value and I will end this line And then I will say C in. So I will wait for the user to enter the value. And this C in will be stored in the variable number. Okay. 
then I want to add all the numbers so I will say sum is equal to sum plus number okay so what it will do is it will give or it will take the value and make the sum of these numbers unless and until I don't I mean disobey this condition which is x is equal to or less than 5 right so I will say this condition and I will print the sum here so I will say the sum the sum is equal to and once again sum which is our variable name okay so this loop will ask five times to enter the values and once this uh, values are uh, entered by the user then it will take the sum of the values and it will print it here or otherwise you can show this sum outside the loop so that you have the sum only once but no, not five or six times so let's try and run this program once again and it says input any value I will enter 10 once again it's asking me input any value 20 once again 30 40 and 50 and press enter and it says me the sum is 150 right this should be equal to that's why it's showing us a plus sign here but it should be ideally equal to so in this way you can uh, take the sum of the values using while loop okay or otherwise if you want while loop to never end you can give some condition which will never be fulfilled for example you can just write something like this while one so this while one generally programmers use it to make an infinite loop just compile the program and run it and it says please enter any values I'm, I will keep on entering values and it will never end because this one or while one is never ending loop so I will never go out of this loop okay so I will keep on entering the value and it will never end so if you want to make infinite loop just make it like this or otherwise just uh, make a loop which has con some condition and loop can exit when that condition is met okay now in this video I'm going to show you how to use do while loop in C++ so what is the basic difference between while loop and do while loop the basic difference between do while loop and while loop is while loop if the condition is false and if the condition is not met it will not execute but the do while loop it will execute at least once even if the condition is not true so let me show you the demonstration this is the code I have written in the last video this is simple code in which I have x is equal to 1 number is equal to 0 and sum is equal to 0 I have initialized three variables and in the while loop I am checking whether the value of x is less than or equal to 5 and if it's less than or equal to 5 I ask the user to enter some number and I make the sum of these number and once the condition is fulfilled and the user has entered the value five times in the while loop then I have print the sum so if you don't remember just see the last video it's very simple so let's say I want to convert this into the do while loop so for example let's take an example of while loop first so what this is doing is when the condition is true it's printing the message but the if condition is not true for example x is less than 1 which is not true x is equal to 1 so which is not less than 1 this will not pre execute it this code 
will not be executed and the sum will remain zero because we have initialized the sum as zero. So let's build it and run the program and you see the sum is zero and this is never executed, right? Now, for example, if we write the same code with do while loop, what is the syntax of do while loop is just cut this while loop from here and paste it after this curly braces and just try it do above. This is the syntax of do while loop and do not forget to give this semicolon here. So this is the simple syntax of do while loop. Okay. So now even if the condition is false, our program is will be executed once because it says do this while this condition is met. So it will be executed once and then it, the program will check okay this condition is not met. So once again it will not loop or it will not execute the same. So let's run the program once again or execute the program once again and run it and you see the program is executed input any value which is this so it goes inside the loop and I give any value 56 and press enter so it gives me the sum 56 right so that means the program is executed at least one even if the condition is not really true so this is the basic difference between do while loop so I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please rate, comment and subscribe and bye for now.